Hello friends, welcome to Code Sutra. In this video, we will be solving lead code problem number 33, search in rotated sorted array. In fact, this problem was discussed in one of our recently concluded workshops on binary search. And if you are someone who is interested in these kinds of workshop, please do consider joining our telegram group where I will be sharing the information regarding this and I have mentioned the link in the description. Having said that, let's dive into the problem. In this problem, we are given a rotated sorted array. So first of all, what, it, what is a rotated sorted array? For example, we have this sorted array. This sorted array is rotated. Let's first rotate it by one step. What happens after rotating it by one step? This will be the final array. That is, we'll be having seven at the start and we'll be having all the elements later. That is, we took the last element and made it as the first element. Similarly, if we rotate it by few steps, this will be the final array, right? 4, 5, 6, 7, 0, 1, and 2. So this is our rotated array. And in the problem, it is asked, we have to find a particular element. Let's find out the particular element. Is 0 present in this? Yes, 0 is present in this. And what is the index of 0? 0 is at the index of 4. So 4 will be our answer. That is, we have to return the index of the target element. Now, say if the target equals 3. So where is 3? 3 is not present, right? So minus 1 will be our answer. So this is a very simple problem statement. That is, there is a rotated sorted array and we have to find the element. If the element is not there, we'll be returning minus 1. Now let's discuss about the brute force approach and the binary search approach. The brute force approach will be a linear search. That is, we will be starting from the first index and we'll search through the entire array until we find the element. If we find the element, we will return the index. If we don't find the element, we'll be returning minus 1. So that will be our linear search or brute force approach, which will have a time complexity of O of n. And now, do we have a better approach than this? Yes, we have a better approach than this. And if you have heard about binary search, you definitely know whenever an array is sorted, the idea is we should be able to use binary search. So how do we use binary search on this? The first thing is we will find the minimum element in this. So when we find the minimum element in this, what have we found out? We have found out the point at which the array is getting differentiated, right? At the first part of the array is also increasing. The second part of the array is also increasing. So now, once we have found the minimum element, that is the starting element of the original array, what we can just do is we can do two separate binary searches on this. Or the first thing is we have to use binary search to find the starting element or the minimum most element in the first case and the second thing is you will be doing binary search on this and you will be bin doing binary search on this so once you have found the element we will be returning the element i haven't extended on this because that is not the optimal approach that we are using again in this case we will be using two binary searches one to find which is the minimum most element and the second to find the element in one of those arrays right so now what is the optimized binary search approach let's pick up the idea of arriving at binary search is very simple you don't pick up the middle element at starting itself just pick up a random element let's pick up six now once we have picked up six what is the idea let's look at the starting element if we look at the starting element is it greater than the starting element or not if it is greater than the starting element what does it mean it means that we are in the first part of the array that is, there are two parts of the array. One is, it's increasing like this. And if you look here, the second part comes and joins here. It should join here. This is the second part of the array. This will be the first part and this will be the second part. So, if this is the case, you found an element and the element is actually greater than the first element. What does it indicate? It indicates that we are in this part of the array. So, now, once we are in this part of the array, what are the chances zero are there in this part of the array? There is no chance, right? So what we can do, we can eliminate all this part and our zero will be in the next part of the array. What did we do? We found out which part of the array it is. We compared it to the first element. If it is greater than the first element, it means that 
all of these elements are increasing and since zero is lesser than this zero is lesser than this there are no chances the element is in this part so we can neglect this part and our left increases right similarly let's pick up one more random element let's pick up one now once we pick up one again if we look at the starting element what do we realize we realize that this is in the second part of the array right once we look at the second part of the array what we have to do is we have to check if this element is greater than or equal to the target element if it is greater than the target element what does this indicate it indicates that the element is on the left side right so let's do a very simple dry run approach and let's look at it so let me erase this and let me do a dry run so what will be the initial l the initial l will be zero the initial r will be equal to the index let me write the index the initial r will be equal to 6 and what will be our mid our mid will be equal to 3 and we found out that the middle element is 7 we found out that the middle element is seven. now we look at the starting element and we realize that this is the first part of the array now after we have realized that what we have to do we have to compare that with zero right since zero will not be present in this why zero will not be present in this one thing it is greater than this element itself sorry it is lesser than this element itself so it will not be on the left side so we can eliminate this and we will be increasing our l to 4 that is mid plus 1 and our r will be same now our new middle will be equal to 5 so what is the element at 5 the element at 5 equals 1 so we will again compare it to the first element is it in the first half or is it in the second half it's in the second half if it is in the second half one more we will, once again we will do the comparison that is we will look at this ending element and since it will not be present on this and this element is also greater than the element that we have to find our r will decrease and both of them will become l will be 4 and our r will reduce to 5 minus 1 that is 4 and our new element will be win and the value is 0 and here we have found out the element and we will be returning this particular index so let me share this pseudo code and a few similar problems to this we initially have our l and we have our r we will run this loop until both of them are not are equal will be running the loop that is l is less than or equal to r the first step is to find the middle element and if we have found out the target will be returning the middle element if not the first thing we have to check is we have to check with the starting element if we are checking with the starting element we will realize which part of the array is the element once we have checked the starting element the next check is we have to check if the target is greater than the starting element and also lesser than am then in our case it will be in the left part else it will be equal to m plus one that is we are eliminating the first part of the array similarly this indicates that it is in this part this indicated this is in this part this indicate this is in this part so once we have done this what we have to do we have to check if target is greater than or equal to a of m if it is greater than a of m and less than a of n minus 1 that indicates that l will be equal to m minus 1 why we are eliminating the left part and similarly will be eliminating the right part if that is not the case finally we will be returning minus 1 if we did not find the element and there are a few similar problems which are similar to this these are from easy and this is one of the hard level problems. so if you are someone interested please do consider joining uh, solving these problems and do join our telegram group where we'll be discussing about this problem thank you for watching the video please do like share and subscribe